I'm Paul Thornalley from the University of Warwick and I'm giving the presentation on activity, regulation, amplification and function in the glyoxylase system. The glyoxylase system metabolizes methylglyoxal. A main source of methylglyoxal is from degradation of triose phosphates in anaerobic glycolysis. About 0.1% of the flux through anaerobic glycolysis degrades spontaneously to methylglyoxal. So this is unavoidable in any biological organism that uses glucose for metabolic energy. Methylglyoxal is produced in this relatively low flux, but it's a very active compound and will modify proteins by glycation, non-enzymatic glycosylation, on proteins directed mainly to arginine modifications producing a hydromidazolone called MGH1, and on DNA it modifies deoxyguanosine bases to produce an imidazopurinone. Both of these types of adducts are quantitatively the most important type of damage to protein and DNA respectively in healthy human people, for example. And so potentially it's very important impairing function of both protein and DNA. Protecting us from this damage is the glyoxylase system. This is a main system that counters the potentially damaging effects of methylglyoxal by metabolizing methylglyoxal to delactate. In past studies, I've found that in all human tissues, glyoxylase counts for at least 97% plus of methylglyoxal metabolism. So it's a very important enzymatic pathway in protecting against damage. Human glyoxylase 1 is a dimeric zinc metalloenzyme in the cytosol of all cells, composed of two equal monomers in homozygotes and also two slightly different subunits in heterozygotes. The reaction catalyzed by methylglyoxal is the isomerization of the hemithioacetal form non-enzymatically from methylglyoxal and glutathione. This is isomerized to S-delactoglutathione. The in situ activity of glyoxylase 1 is directly related to the concentration of glutathione. So in oxidative stress, if glutathione is decreased, then the metabolism of methylglyoxal is decreased, and methylglyoxal increases, and there will be consequently increased protein and DNA damage likely. The gene for human glyoxylase 1 is on chromosome 6p21.2. There are two alleles inherited in a simple codominant manner, expressing two the gene products with alanine or a glutamic acid at residue 111. Great interest in glyoxylase 1 genetics has recently emerged because we now know that there's a hotspot for copy number variation of the glyoxylase 1 genetic locus in the human and mouse genome, and the prevalence is thought to be about 2 to 3 percent. And there's also increased copy number variation of glyoxylase 1 in human tumors, overall about 8 percent, but higher in tumors of the breast and lung, which confers multidrug resistance. And at the current time, there is no way of countering this multidrug resistance, but there is a prospect that glyoxylase 1 inhibitors will provide for this. Looking at the conditions and consequences of deficiency of glyoxylase 1 imposed endogenously or experimentally, homozygous deletion of glyoxylase 1 is embryonically lethal in mice and humans. Heterozygous deletion is rare in humans, but it's linked to severe schizophrenia. Deficiency in mice can be engineered by expression of glyoxylase 1 siRNA, and this produces a phenotype of accelerated metabolic and vascular disease. Silencing of glyoxylase 1 in C. elegans decreases lifespan and produces a sensitivity to declining glucose tolerance and increased reactive oxygen species formation from mitochondria. Overexpression of glyoxylase 1 is expected in people that have increased glyoxylase 1 copy number. This is likely linked to resistance to metabolic vascular and neurological disease, although this is yet to be studied and confirmed. Glyoxylase 1 transgenic mice are resistant to metabolic and vascular disease, and overexpression of glyoxylase 1 in C. elegans produced increased lifespan, maximum and median lifespan increased 30%, and resistance to declining glucose tolerance and decreased reactive oxygen species. So there is, seems to be a great health benefit if we can increase glyoxylase 1 expression.
In this slide, I show the first attempt at systems modeling of the glyoxalase pathway. And, and systems biology approach to glyoxalases will be important to gain a more secure and detailed understanding of regulation of the glyoxalase pathway. I computed a mathematical model of methyl glyoxal flux from glycolysis being metabolized through the glyoxalase pathway to delactate and also reversibly binding to files on proteins and also irreversibly binding to proteins to produce MGH1. In the control situation, colored blue, you can see uh, I have normalized levels of glyoxalase activity, delactate flux, methyl glyoxal concentration and MGH1 glycation out of production in cells to unity. Then looking at the effect of 90% inhibition of glyoxalase 1, say by a gly cell permeable glyoxalase 1 inhibitor we might develop for cancer chemotherapy, this leads to a slight decrease in delactate flux but not strong inhibition because we're increasing the methyl glyoxal concentration and then it can utilize the remaining glyoxalase 1 activity. But this forces methyl glyoxal to further modify protein and so we expect over a three, six fold increase in glycation adduct, 6.3 fold was predicted. In the green situation is the case where we would like to achieve a threefold induction of glyoxalase 1 as for example compounds exploiting the functional antioxidant response element in the promoter and a threefold increase in glyoxalase 1 activity slightly increases the delactate flux only slightly because most methyl glyoxal is being metabolized to delactate anyway and it decreases the steady state concentration of methyl glyoxal by about 40 uh, 60 percent it's now 41 percent of the control and this produces a concomitant decrease about a 60 percent decrease in the glycation adduct so this is the expectation we can achieve through inhibiting or enhancing glyoxalase 1 activity currently glyoxalase 1 inhibitors are being developed for treatment of refractory tumors and glyoxalase 1 inducers are being developed for novel functional foods so in the future there are now great prospects for the glyoxalase field. Glyoxalase 1 inducers are being developed as functional foods exploiting this functional antioxidant response promoter element. Glyoxalase 1 inducer therapeutic agents are being developed for diabetic nephropathy and other disorders. Glyoxalase 1 inhibitors are being developed for treatment of multidrug resistant tumors and pathogenic microorganisms. Glyoxalase and related advanced glycation end products are being exploited for clinical diagnostics and natural copy number variation of glyoxalase 1 found in some plants that are crops will, could, will provide for environmental stress resistant crops and aid for food, food security. So in the future we're likely to see important developments for improvement of health, in, improvement of treatment of disease and also security of food supplies from glyoxalase research. Thank you.